Hello friends, welcome to the Southern Mountain Kitchen. Today we're making steak biscuits. So to make cube steak is really not hard. We're gonna make a breading for it and then we're gonna fry it in a skillet. So you're gonna start off with about a half a cup of buttermilk and you're gonna add an egg to this and mix it up because this is gonna actually be our coating that helps the other ingredients stick to the actual steak. So I'm only gonna make two pieces of cube steak, but they're quite large. So they can be cut up and used for more than one person easily, um, depending on how you're using them. So on our plate, we're gonna go ahead and add at least a half a cup of flour, and then we're gonna add a fourth a cup of Italian breadcrumbs. And then we're gonna mix that up a little bit so that way everything is all mixed through because we wanna make sure that it's a good mixing of the flour and the breadcrumbs so when you put your steak on it, it's gonna coat evenly. So what we're gonna do is take one piece of the steak and get it coated in the buttermilk egg mixture and then bring the other one in on top of it. So this way you're making sure they are completely coated on both sides before you start using them. Now, once you get it good and coated, you're gonna take it over to your flour and breadcrumb mixture, and you're gonna flip this back and forth and get it coated on both sides. Because once we do have it completely coated, we're gonna dip it again, because we wanna make sure we have a good coating of mixture on the outside to actually give it a good breading. So go back into your buttermilk and egg again, and then bring it back over and hit it into the flour and breadcrumbs again, so that way we're mixing it to where it's basically gonna have a really thick, decent coating all over. Now, as you're doing this, you can actually take your fork spoon or whatever and spoon some of the flour on top and press it in to get it really into the grooves of the steak because there's all kinds of holes, all kinds of grooves where this has been chopped up. So you have an opportunity to really load this with your flour. So go ahead with your second piece and do exactly the same thing, flipping it back and forth, then dipping it again, and then coating it one more time. Now, if you had a couple extra pieces of steak, you could keep going on this and actually have more than just two. I only needed two because I wasn't feeding a lot of people. Now, once you get this done, you're gonna add some oil to coat the bottom of your pan. You do need a decent amount to make sure that you have enough when you put the steaks in so they don't stick. One thing you will learn about cooking cube steak or other steak in general, they do try to stick to the pan um, and you don't wanna pull off your coating. So if you have a decent amount of oil like I have in the bottom of mine, you are fine. But make sure as you're cooking, you continuously flip these back and forth. So now we're gonna add some seasoning. Now mind you, I'm gonna tell you an amount of seasoning, but I'm putting some on top and some on the bottom. So it's a half a teaspoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of salt, and then a half a teaspoon of steak seasoning. But I'm only putting a little bit on each side, so that way it's kind of coated on both. That way the flavoring goes all over. And then after that, you're gonna add a little bit of adobo seasoning, which we're talking basically just enough to give it a sprinkle. It's probably not even half a teaspoon. And once they have cooked for a few minutes, you wanna flip them. Now, this is gonna take a few minutes to cook this thoroughly. Um, you're probably gonna be cooking more than 10 or 12 minutes. Just keep flipping them back and forth and you're gonna go for the degree of doneness that you want. If you're cooking steak, whether it's cube steak or whatever, the longer you cook it, the more done it is. Um, some people like them just done. Some people like them extremely cooked. It's just going to be your choice of how you want to do it. But continue to move these and flip them until you get this golden brownish color on the outside. And then you know you are getting towards done. Just a reminder, don't let them sit too long before you either flip them or at least move them back and forth in the pan. So that way you prevent sticking. Now 
And now we're going to make biscuits. This is not really a hard process as long as you follow the steps carefully. We're going to start out with a pan which we're going to coat with aluminum foil and spray it with non-stick cooking spray so that way these things do not stick. And into a large mixing bowl we're going to put two cups of flour and then we're going to add a whole stick of butter cut up into pieces. And we're going to take a fork and break up the butter into the flour. This is a process that's kind of hard to do it sometimes because you're going to have to keep forking the butter until you break it up to where it's small pieces just a little bigger than like a big piece of rice or something because we don't want too much butter in one place but we want it to go through all the biscuits. So you're going to take a fork and work your way through from piece to piece of the butter until you break it into the flour. You could use this with a cutter or whatever. I use a fork because it's just a little easier for me to control in a bowl and it does what I want it to. Now we are going to add one cup of buttermilk because this is going to give these biscuits a great taste. And once we get that in there, then we are going to add one tablespoon of baking powder a half a teaspoon of baking soda, three quarters teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of sugar. And once all of this is in, we are going to stir and mix this up. So keep going with your fork, work the sides, pull everything from the bottom and keep going. Now, if your mixture seems a little dry and it's not really sticking together, you can add more buttermilk. Because as I was doing this, I discovered mine needed a little bit more and I added some because I think I had a little extra flour in it. So once you get it in and you get it right, your consistency should be something like this. And you're going to go and mix it. It's not going to be too wet, but it's not going to be dry either. You want this to stick together. Now you're going to need a cutting board and a biscuit cutter. Put some flour onto your board and we're going to bring this out a bit at a time because we're going to cut the biscuits while they're here. So as you're bringing out the dough, you need to actually think about the fact that you need to preheat your oven to 425 degrees, maybe 430, depending on how warm your oven gets. And we're going to go ahead and fold these pieces of dough into our floured surface and fold them over and over until we actually get them to a good solid state to where we can actually cut them with our biscuit cutter. Um, I would leave them at least a decent thickness so you're gonna actually have over a half an inch thickness on these biscuits so that way they rise up pretty decently um, and you're gonna go through and cut them one or two at a time and then bring more of the dough out onto the surface and work it into the bits that you have left over so this way you can keep using the old bits without them drying out and just keep folding it over and over put a little bit of flour on top if it's sticking to your fingers and keep turning it until you've got them completely done. So as you can see, I have folded these kind of long so that way when I cut them, there's no problem with actually making my way through the biscuits and having at least two of them on each stack. And again, fold over your dough and then add some more to it so that way it doesn't dry out. And just if you have to put a little flour on top fold it over until you get this flat and like totally sealed together to where you can actually cut again now I will go through and do this until I've used up all the dough I had um, usually with what I just did I can get anywhere from like nine to ten biscuits so there's a decent amount in here. Um, just keep working it, adding a little flour on top and keep going until you've used up all of it. Because usually at the end of when I've gotten my nine biscuits or so, 10 biscuits, there's just a little bit of the dough left over. Um, and then you can basically just ball that up and make it into just a throwaway biscuit on the side, which, you know, I usually do that and feed it to the dog, but it's something that, you know, you're gonna get a decent amount of these out. So keep going, keep cutting until you've gotten them all done. And then on our pan that we already sprayed, we're gonna line the biscuits up like this and get them ready for the oven. And when they come back, they'll look something like this. Now, you're gonna to need to take some melted butter and go over the tops of them because this helps clean up any extra flour which might be on top of it, but also gives them a really golden appearance. 
So go ahead and work your way through each one. And after they set for a few minutes, then you're ready to cut and use. You can actually add whatever you like to these. So it always amazes me when you put the butter on top, how much the color of the biscuits change. And when you're done, this is what it looks like. And this is really wonderful to eat. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And I hope you'll check out my cookbook, which is available on Amazon and in bookstores worldwide. Have a great day.